the internet has turned on Andrew Schultz. Have we played this already? This one from, what's it called? From uh, Retroactive. Have you guys seen this? Retroactive video. The internet has turned on Andrew Schultz. Let's play this one because this might be a good one to check out, actually. Poor person, and I only have so much room that I can climb. Right. I can never be Andrew Schultz. I'm always going to be this guy who works with Andrew Schultz or, or like... Oh, uh, the irony is brutal. Is Joe Rogan knowingly dissing Schultz and Akash or is he just that blind? Andrew's first episode on the Joe Rogan experience in 2019 went neutrally. The comments barely mention him due to Charlemagne's presence. Jump ahead to June 2020 and Schultz is a big hit amongst Rogan fans. With yes, I told you, I remember. I remember when I watched that. The first episode, the first solo episode of Schultz on JRE was sick. I thought it was a really good appearance. Like he really went on there with like a point to prove, wanted to impress Went to be Rogan. Like he he played the role really well. He got into Rogan's good books really well that that performance. I'm not gonna lie. It was really good. But then I don't know what happened after that. It went downhill super, super fast. Unfortunately for him, I guess, isn't it? Unfortunately for him. What can he do? Tons of positive comments, helping to grow his Patreon and overall podcast audience with the exposure to an average of eleven million listeners. So Yo, people are out here making hold on, how much are they get in on their fucking Patreon? Because I've got my Patreon is not there at all. It's fucking frightening. People are making like my yearly salary per month on fucking Patreon. It's fucking crazy. Let's see flagrant. What's their Patreon making? This is gonna be scary. <gasps> Fifty five they're making more than my yearly salary at work per month. Can you see that? Can you see that? Fifty five. Wow absolute wowzers go to skip ahead to now and have schultz's latest appearance result in him being roasted in every single comment i mean wow it's crazy how quickly audiences can change their minds but also how quickly a person can change yeah exactly keith T. he was sharp on that one and his ego was still abnormal yeah that's i think somebody tom who, who said to me someone left me a comment about that actually let me see if i can get for it bear with me a second but somebody left me a really good comment about the ego and shit because I th I'm really, I'm really interested to know, like, what happens to people? Why do they go from like being normal? Soon they get some money in the bank, it just, it just gets to them, and they just can't. So maybe I was thinking, you know what? Maybe I'm destined to to follow these footsteps. When I get to a position where I'm on, maybe I, maybe I also will turn into these guys. As much as I'm laughing at them now, maybe once I get fucking AG one as a sponsor, <laughs> Magic Mind and all this shit, right? <laughs> It's like making sixty grand a month for Patreon. Maybe I'm like, it's gonna, it's gonna fuck with my head. Also, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's good. So big up, um, big up C Leech seventy four. They they said this about the Burt Kreischer thing. Burt Kreischer's cringe video. This um, C Leech seventy four said. Great video. I don't always catch a live stream, but still enjoy the show nonetheless. The point you made at 2019 about talking into a mic, gaining popularity, becoming successful and making boatloads of money, but then it changes you permanently, made me think of Havana Syndrome. It's that direct energy weapon system that's supposedly being developed and run from South Pole in Antarctica. I saw a video about it this morning, and if you skip to 9 minutes 12 seconds, the guy explains a bit about the quantum mechanics involved in the new technology then mentions the ability to target people in any part of the world and gain access to their brains. Okay, this is a bit wild. The ability to be able intrusive thoughts in people's and other people's heads and have them hear it in their own voice. Both fascinating and terrifying. That's what fame is like. It always seems like the people who end up being famous start listening to all those intrusive thoughts that come with being famous. Most of the time, they end up being really fucked up from living that life, life that way. When you talked about it, it happening to everyone that becomes famous, it made me think of it just some food for thought, pun intended. Yeah, maybe that is true. Maybe those, maybe those intrusive thoughts that you kind of swat away or you kind of pretend you're humble about, maybe they just like get validated in some way because you're like, hold on, maybe I'm a big deal. Look at my house, look at my car, look at my wife. You're like, yeah. I'm fucking the big deal. I'm the God. I am a God. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Wherever it is, like, it seems to happen to all comedians. Apart from, a, there's only a small group that they don't change. I think Shane Gillis is a good example. Shane Gillis has had a crazy me meteoric rise, but he seems to be quite level-headed. He seems to still haven't got, he hasn't gone through his cunt stage or cunt phase yet. Hope he doesn't. 
But Shane Gillis seems to be the one who's kind of, you know, pretty normal still. For the fame. I don't know too many people, people in our business that are su that are really successful, like your level or my level, yeah. that are dicks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me think about that. Yeah. How about you? Schultz Epiphanies are my yeah. favorite. <laughs> Yo. He repeats his statement. He's like, That's crazy, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, not this guy. Guests like him make me appreciate the comment section being back. Schultz the type of guy to ask questions he thinks he already knows the answers to. Andrew looks like he went to do it. <laughs> Andrew looks like he went to do a show in Germany, then escaped to Argentina. In the opening clip, Rogan hilariously mocks the old models of media, but the entire time is just describing Akash Singh, who is also gaining flat online. I think this proves Joe doesn't watch Flagrant, just like the time he had his supposed best friend Duncan Trussell on and didn't watch the Midnight Gospel. Total douche move to not watch your close friend's animated podcast inspired tribute to his late mother that's entirely up your alley in its style and storytelling, but yep, that's, that's Rogan for you. Schultz must have been cringing inside thinking about his cast of knee slappers, like how is Joe this oblivious? He even criticized Flagrant when he appeared that it was like late night. Then he goes on this tirade to the late night of podcasts. It makes no sense from any angle. Schultz is still a decent comedian and there's worse tickets you could have, but podcast listeners are seriously tiring of his surface level digging into subjects and having fake epiphanies most people had at a young age as shane pointed out perfectly that's a really good point Th those epiphanies are the ones that you have when you're like 18 smoking like sh smoking like um what what's that thing called we used to smoke back in the day um is it shake do you remember when you were a kid you smoke shake you'd get all the like the Bit, the dead bits of buds and you'd buy like a bag of shake for like 20 pounds or something right it'd be like seven grams of shake and it'd be like whatever strands all the leftovers in one bag loads of stems all over the place that's when you have those epiphanies you know smoking and shake in your one of your friend's houses or out in a park somewhere you have this epiphany about the world or whatever but you're usually 18 19 early 20s not in your fucking mid 30s Glee. A good example is their recent chat on the Kendrick J. Cole Drake beef with each passing- Yo, big up. Joe, 99% of men are above your level. If you catch my drift. Fear no choice. <laughs> big up fear no. no. exactly. Big up fear no. Blast that one. No, no, yeah. Oh, God. Fyodor's always funny. We got Fyodor, so love, love and light. <laughs> In comment, it's clear to me that they've done the bare minimum and aren't hip hop fans by any stretch. Was a story of Adidon, I yeah, think it was yeah. called. Kendrick, but also Kendrick, a rapper who only comes out every, you know, what is it, four years or whatever. He's story of Adidon, I think it's called. Ah, uh, they, they cover popular topics without even knowing what they're talking about. It's great. Schultz thinks Drake isn't scared to respond. I don't think he's scared to respond. The guy who never. <sighs> When when Schultz talk, talks hip hop, it's always the time I turn off. I remember when I used to listen to Brilliant Idiots. I don't listen to it anymore, but when I used to listen to Brilliant Idiots, that's the one thing that used to annoy me about Schultz and hip hop opinions because he's got he's just clueless. I don't I don't know. Can he even dance? Like I don't know why people listen to him. I don't know. Akash, you need to listen to these guys like, again. There might be your taste in terms of comedy, but when it comes to music, I'm not listening to those two dudes. Never. Ever responded to Pusha T's "You Are Hiding a Child"? The guy with ghostwriters who was widely accepted as the less capable rapper. Hmm, I'm sh sure he will this time. Every past goat would have responded already, but Drake has so much he can be dissed for. There's really no winning for him. Drake is, I've probably seen widely by people younger than us, as the greatest ever. More people say Drake is the best ever than Kendrick is the best. I mean, like, yeah. Pusha T is not somebody that people think was ever competing with Drake. What the? Uh, Drake? What? Music is subjective, so just say you prefer Drake or Kash. But to say Drake is the GOAT, implying the highest rated albums, the strongest technical ability as a rapper, Schultz and the Flagrant Crew, just like they do on most topics, they don't really know what they're talking about. Yes, music is subjective, but the hip-hop world is pretty damn clear. I mean, J. Cole just apologized, which is just huh? a bit like Jay-Z and Nas, but as did JLA. 
Electronica and Big Sean when they dissed Kendrick. Drake does bigger numbers with pop fans, Drake beat Meek Mill, but Drake is not the better rapper or album conceptualizer. It will always bother him and Cole that their best works aren't appreciated by hip hop or music as a whole, like to Pimp a Butterfly or Good Kid Mad City. Look at Retroactive flexing his hip hop knowledge. Look at Retroactive flexing his hip hop knowledge. Guan Retroactive. Bad boy. Look at Retroactive showing off. Look at Retroactive showing off his hip hop knowledge. Look at him. What a legend. Is, and that's the source of a lot of this beef. And I gotta deal with this mother who I would look at it low key as clout chasing. I'd be like, bro, like I literally, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm Drake. I'm like, I'm a good guy. <laughs> Drake is a good guy and Kendrick is clout chasing. <laughs> Hip hop has always had a Michael Jordan level of competitive nature. This is a good for the genre. You'd think it wouldn't be that crazy of a concept to a comedian. Big up. Crack Amico is going after Schultz for his next song. He's got a good couple weeks before his life turns to dust. Oh, really? Nice. nice. Oh, yeah. I think I heard that, right? Did he do a vote on it? I think he did a poll on it or something. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that, actually. I'm looking forward to it. I actually want to see him also respond to it live stream do a reaction to it hopefully in good spirit in good um you know yeah but not weirdly like how mark norman was sitting awkwardly when he was listening to the fucking other one about burr and fucking tom hopefully he reacts to it well but yeah big up uh big up what you call it big up crack amigo what a fucking legend yeah i can't wait to hear that one that should be good that should be fucking good that should be a good one barely comes out ever making a diss track about me so that he can be looked out as number one where I'm dropping an album every single year I'm still on top of the game like yeah. I'll be annoyed Schultz really thinks that Drake dropping every year means he's better pack it up folks the goat debate is over <laughs> stop arguing who's the best Viper has over 1500 albums even one called Yule Cowards Don't Even is Smoke that he's the real big three and holy sh to find out an internet meme from years ago is now arrested and accused of horribly unspeakable crimes well with a mugshot like that I support everybody I put everybody on I take so many chances on so many artists and really why do these guys listen to these guys of musical opinion honestly you listen to flagrant for musical taste you are losing in life bro listen to them for their fun vibes the friendly banter but never for music you should never do that to yourself man please don't do that to yourself really try to uplift them as El sweatshirt famously said drake is a culture vulture and has been known to jack a new artist sound like he did with xxx i think this is not true i think retroactive doesn't like drake he hates him but let's be chill Drake isn't a culture vulture. Let's fucking relax, please. If Drake's a culture vulture, what's Vlad? What's Adam 22? Come on, bro. You can't, you devalue the culture vulture, you know, this label when you label fucking Drake a culture vulture. Cause let's be fucking real. You know what I mean? Come on, let's be real. Centacion and many others you've never heard of. Party Next Door and The Weeknd have also beefed with Drake over the years and said the exact same thing. Andrew Schultz has no idea how Drake is viewed by hip hop. Such a surface level take. Fight three. Yeah, this Drake record is is not is not good. FD Signifier, Dead End Hip Hop, Anthony Fantano, all have great takes on this topic for more. Drake is a great rapper. I just don't think he's got it in him to really compete. Drake can't rap with Kendrick. Better than anything Cole. And oh yeah, I used to watch that show. What was that show called again? Dead in hip, yeah, dead in hip hop. What do you guys still watch this? By the way, I used to love watching them review albums. Are they still around? Dead in hip hop. I used to check them out all the time. I don't, I don't know why I stopped listening to it, but they were really good, man. They, the arguments about music and shit, the debates, the points that they would make, their tastes. I think it was really good. Dead in hip hop. Are they still around? Yeah, they're still there. Okay, they're still around. I haven't checked them out in ages. They were really fucking good. Really good channel for hip hop takes. To be fair. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of Dead and Hip Hop. Big up Dead and Hip Hop, gang. Love to see him still around, still thriving. I just don't think he's got it in him to really compete. Drake can't rap with Kendrick. Better than anything Cole and Drake has ever done. Who is Kendrick putting on? Th that part is true. Who has Kendrick put on? Like, what about Baby Keem? Baby Keem? Yeah. Like, being the biggest artist on his label also definitely SZA. helped the careers exactly. of SZA, exactly. Absol, J-Rock, Schoolboy Q. All without jacking their entire sound for his album like Drake did with Take Care. To be fair, I don't really think he put on, you know, all those other guys, but I think Baby Keem definitely put on. But Schultz just jumps on any topic with strong opinions without understanding what the hell the context even is. Yeah, Schultz is definitely a loud and wrong type of person. Very loud, very wrong. Or very wrong and very loud.
And is, yep, it's it's all just blind hate instead of Kendrick clearly proving he's better than both of them. <laughs> Yo, you know what this is? It's hate. I believe that. It's hate, it's hate and jealousy. I believe that. All just blind hate towards good guy Drake who should be worshipped. Yeah, but I think Pusha is a better battle rapper than... Kendrick. Like, Kendrick, I see, like, more, like, artsy storytelling and great rhymes. Maybe it's time to dig into every flagrant music talk. Maybe it's this funny for other genres as well. It's so annoying listening to Andrew talk about things he talked about 50 times while trying to act like it's the first time he's come to this realization. <laughs> exactly. Andrew's mustache isn't allowed within 500 feet of the school. <laughs> Andrew is the type of guy who finishes your sentence and now that's his idea. Andrew looks like he had an emergency and had to leave mid-haircut. Joltz is the Jimmy Fallon of comedy. Jesus, it's brutal. Like, literally every single comment. Complete switch from a few years ago. His peers like Tim Dillon or Theo Vaughn generally have more unique and thought through insights when big things go down like Nickelodeon or Puff Daddy. As has finally been exposed, shout out Cat Williams. And as such, they both have zero of this kind of backlash when appearing on other people's shows. Authenticity is such a difficult thing to measure, but the masses are a harsh judge. Schultz definitely filled the Brendan slot. Oh, okay, whatever you think, I think. Yes, sir, Mr. Rogan. What is the VIP? The VIP is the most valuable player. <laughs> the MVP. Yeah, it's <laughs> VIP, though. Very important player. Okay. What? Considering Shorb is hold, not- Hold on, hold on, what was that? Yes, sir, Mr. Rogan. What is the VIP? The VIP is the most valuable player. Why that confuses me? VIP doesn't mean most valuable player. That's MVP. Yeah. <laughs> the MVP. Yeah, it's <laughs> VIP though. Very important player. Okay. Consider yeah, when when Rogan tells you MVP is VIP, you say okay, right? That's basically what it means, because he's the big he's the big dog. When Rogan tells you MVP is VIP, you 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 agree. That's what you do. You just agree. You just agree. <laughs> <laughs> Rogan re re reali Rogan's reality distortion field in full fucking effect. I love it. You fucking love it. <laughs> Anyways, big up retroactive. The internet turned on shorts. Um, but I think he's okay because he's still funny on stage, you know? I just think those bits he's done recently on Meek Mill, and I think he did one, was he on Diddy? I forgot which one he did recently, but he's still a really good comic, you know? That's the thing about Schultz, he's lucky. He does, he's really funny on, on stage, I think so. Maybe even more so on pods, I'm not going to lie. He's actually the reverse of Theo. He's actually not that funny on pods, but way funny on stage. And Theo's funnier on pods than he is on stage. Really weird inverse, but yeah. But big up Retroactive. Subscribe to his channel. He's fucking brilliant. Really, really cool. Love his videos. Big up retroactive. Big up blood clot retroactive.